This is an antique radio book from the Netherlands from a pioneer in um, um, radio amateurism and it was Mr. Corver, John Corver. Uh, the title says The Wireless Radio Amateur Station by Mr. G. Corver. Uh, issued in The Hague. And I want to show some um, pictures from this book. I bought this book on a flea market, radio flea market, and I can only give a few impressions about this very important book for the Netherlands. Um, it dates from 1928 or so, as far as I know, 1928. And um, uh, these days, the radio amateurism was very popular and everyone interested uh, tried to make a radio themselves. Uh, this is for instance a car with a receiver, radio receiver in, uh, mounted on it. 1928 or so, don't know this exactly. But um, and here you see, for instance, how you have to mount uh, an antenna free outside. How you have to uh, mount an antenna. All kinds of very, very practical things are uh, declared in this book. And of course, the first radio was always the crystal receiver. This is the weather forecast on a boat in an illustration. And this is the well known crystal receiver. They um, consisted of a crystal, uh, for, for instance, um, calcium or, uh, well, I don't know the exact material from the crystal at the moment. Carborundum, sorry, it's carborundum and uh, steel, for instance. That was a popular uh, crystal. Steel wire here and carborundum here. And you have to press the crystal, the point of the needle down, and look for a certain place on the crystal where radio detection took place. So this is a classical um, crystal detector circuit. And the book goes on, of course, here on the next page, the same circuit, connected here to the, the water line, let's say that, that uh, forms the earth connection, telephone, antenna, and here again the crystal. But this book also uh, issues a lot of other circuits and for instance tube circuits and all these tube circuits from these books you can uh, make now at the moment in 2012 you can still make the circuits from these books uh, when you find the right uh, electron tubes. This is for instance a complete crystal receiver for telephony. And here you can set the frequency by uh, moving this part on the coil. And here is the crystal detector. This is a variometer circuit. Two coils that couple, but the inductance from the inner coil can be varied opposite to the outer coil. And that's a variometer circuit, very popular. This is the uh, electronic circuit for a variometer. Here you see both coils, inner coil and outer coil. And also with a variometer you can tune in to radio stations. Popular way to do it. 
still available nowadays. Here of course uh, tuning capacitors, this one, this one, etc. But now we go to the first tube circuit in this book and that's this radio circuit. Um, this is the antenna, this is the coil to which the uh, frequency is tuned, it enters the grid via this capacitor, the radio signal, and here we find the backcoupling uh, coil. And with this backcoupling coil you can make the radio much more sensitive. Um, and in fact you do that by putting a part of the, of the energy that's amplified here on the uh, anode, putting a part of the energy back so that the whole circuit starts to generate. But it doesn't, uh, it must not generate because uh, then you hear um, a sound, a disturbing sound, but just uh, before the point where it generates um, is, the ideal is the ideal place, location, to make the radio work properly and make it very selective. And that's the aim from this coil, back coupling coil. And here inside the tube the radio signal is detected that has to do with the properties from this tube, uh, the way um, this tube uh, amplifies and the uh, curved characteristic from the um, anode circuit. And here you see how such a circuit was made in real. This is P, this coil, the tuning coil, and this is T the back coupling coil and you could move these coils um, a little bit closer T closer to P or P to T and on a certain moment um, the circuit was not generating but uh, got a lot of more a lot more sensitive to receive radio signals here's the tuning capacitor and uh, these are the connections where the tube had to be uh, put in. So, uh, like I said earlier, it's almost impossible to uh, make, give a good impression from this book. It was one of the Dutch uh, radio pioneers. And uh, there are a lot of circuits in this book. As far as I know, also for superheterodyne receivers, etc. This is again the same circuit, P and T, the tuning um, uh, coil and the back coupling coil. And here you can tune in to the radio station. And here on the front, the, the tube was put in. It only needed four connections uh, for the filament and the um, grid and the anode. Very simple, but it worked properly. So uh, perhaps I can show some more circuits for uh, from more complicated radio uh, receivers. This for instance, here you have a first stage to receive the radio signal and the second stage This amplifies, of course, a lot more, so the whole circuit becomes more sensitive. Here it says high selectivity with a minimum amount of measures. Uh, possibility to receive with uh, a certain type of antenna, uh, RAM antennas let's say mirror antenna, but that's not the right word, I know. Well, let's try to look at uh, more uh, complicated receivers in this book. You see a lot of advertisements. All these uh, firms don't exist any, 
any longer at the moment. But okay. Splendor was a very important brand for tubes in the past. Splendor. Cuprox uh, metal rectifiers. These uh, rectifiers were made with uh, copper oxide. That's the reason why it's called cuprox. Cup means copper, copper oxide. Well, um, I try to find now a superheterodyne, superheterodyne radio in this book. Okay, I can't find it at this moment, but uh, I think um, I have uh, done some. Uh, I've put some energy in showing how this, uh, how important this book is.